to look that up under a, on the Federal Real Properties Act, okay? It says right there what a deed is, okay? So when you get the deed, that's step three, okay? Is uh, recording it, that's step three. Step four, you take the deed, okay? And you go to the forms that OLA has, which is Ontario Land Association, which again, Carrie Lee, you have those documents, you've seen it. Yes, I have. And uh, so you go and apply for uh, the form, okay? You need to have the deed. That's why you must have the deed first. They won't yeah. even look at you if you don't have the deed. So you bring, uh, you send in the deed with that application form, and they will issue you a federal land patent or a crown land patent grant, whichever you want to call it. But AKA is an allotted title, okay? It's free reign and it's perpetual ownership, which means you own it forever. And, ever, and it kind of means that it, it means also that uh, that no one has any jurisdiction on your property. Exactly, and it has no conditions. So, um, does that affect your, um, let's say, your hydro or anything or like that, or is that separate from it? No, it doesn't affect it. You can still pay, you can still pay the hydro bills if you want or whatever. Yeah, okay. I was just curious about that. If it was everything contained on the land or just the land itself with whatever house or, or buildings well, might be on it. Depends on how far you want to push it. You could look at it that way. If there's a hydro already going there, um, you can look at it this way, saying you know, any interruption can be seen as, a, as an act of trespassing. You can put it that way if you really want to get gutsy. Yep, so, I gotcha. Um, so yeah, so that's that's how you'll be able to obtain a loyal title. So I gained six acres of land for two hundred and fifty bucks, and and with the two hundred sixty-five thousand dollar house on it for two hundred fifty bucks. I'm just waiting on the loyal title. It should be here in about a week and a half. You get the loyal title. Okay, lots of people have been saying it, uh, the people who stays in the private. Um, when you get the loyal title, you will see a mailman with a briefcase that's attached to his wrist with a handcuff. It, it's that serious. It's serious shit. Yeah, it's 250 bucks for six acres of land and a $265,000 house on it. So I was telling uh, I was telling everybody on the uh, on the panel um, at Freethink today about it, and it was like, okay, we got to hear what he has to say. And, and <laughs> it's I, I, honestly, I could take, I <laughs> I don't mean I mean I I still want to do a whole bunch of other stuff with my show, but I really want to concentrate on the sovereign issues right now because there's um, this seems to be the only way to any type of true freedom and a house. On six acres of land that's valued at over two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Not that I even want. The house. Sorry? The house is two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. That's not even including the land. Not including the property. Okay, so there. I mean, I don't even want to get into that because you're looking at almost probably a half a million dollars for all of it. Yeah, probably. I don't know the exact percentage of an acre, but yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. It's, now you it's look at that land too. This is the money shot for all of us. I mean, we don't, you don't have to get, I'm not saying that you're being greedy, so don't take it that way. You don't have, I just wouldn't want to clean a $260,000 house. <laughs> I really wouldn't. My parents owned like a $380,000 house when I was a kid, and I hated it because I had to help clean it, and it sucked. Yeah. Well, good thing. But at the same time, but at the same time, I don't want to be paying a mortgage making other people rich the way that I am. Um, this is something that I'm personally going to be looking into a lot more. John and I have decided that we're going to go this route. We're going to go look for uh, look for the property like you're describing it, go through all the motions, and then once we have it, then we're going to put this one up for sale or whatever the case may be. Someone said, well, rent it. Well, no, because then that's a whole new bunch of problems that I don't want to have to deal with, to be honest. I'd rather just walk away from it altogether. Um, we've got about nine minutes left in the show um, I, where would we like to end this uh, I actually just want to throw in an extra note if you uh, like when you look for land you I, I can't really explain how it works um, but you're gonna have to actually go into the land registry though they will explain it they'll explain it no problem they don't have any problems with that um, but 
warning, uh, bring your credit card because you might be spending a few grand on this because sometimes if you're looking in a bit uh, at a busy area like Toronto, it's next to fucking impossible to try and uh, get some land because there's so many houses out there. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, but I mean, if you and want to have a good shot, go in the country land like where Cotton is or where uh, like uh, um, uh, Barry is. Barry's got a lot of land left still. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I mean, and, and this is maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I notice a lot of people going um, this way with uh, the movement, whether it be um, in the way of just wanting to live self-sustainably or whatever the case is, getting off of the tit of the beast, we don't want to be in the city because that's where all the shite is. So, I mean, anybody that turns around, you know, I guess the best way to put it is act honorably because if you don't, you're going to get fucked. Yeah. And act with honor. That's a huge thing nowadays that not enough people do. You don't act with honor and you get screwed. The most important thing is, um, was, like, I can't stress this enough, right? You have to make sure you enforce your rights, okay? You can't just enforce your rights once or twice and then expect them to go away. You have to be, be you have to prepare them. You have to be ready to go uh, at any time. Yeah. Because you know, like, may, sure, you might, you know, when you get that land, but you know what? That's not going to stop a bank from trying to bulldoze you, trying to uh, railroad you. You know, because you probably piss them off. You probably just cut in from the uh, cutting their from the revenue. Right, so you're going to have a fight no matter what's going on, but it's worth the fight. You might, yeah, you might. I'm not saying it's going to happen all the time, but there is a possibility. So just a fair warning, when you get into this land, um, depending on where you look, you might want to bring a credit card with a few hundred bucks or a grand, because it might take you a while. It's $7 per search. Yeah, seven dollars per search. But if you're lucky and you might know some real estate agents that are friends that might want to be helpful to you, um, I know that m my age bracket between thirty and forty. <laughs> I'm thirty six and I don't care. But anyway, in, in between that age bracket, a lot of our friends or acquaintances that we went to school with or whatever the case may be, they are now real estate agents or whatever. So I mean, talk to people, put it out there that you want to look for and don't tell them what you're doing. Just tell them, listen, I want to find a house that was foreclosed on or whatever the case is and work from there. You don't have to, yeah, okay, you're right. you're doing it shady, but you're just not giving all the information. So do what you have to without causing any harm on anybody else to get what you need. Well, you know what? It's not it's not shady. It's just uh, it's just legislation, and not too many people know about it. Ignorance of the laws of no excuse. You, if you use it, and people come bitching at you, saying, "Oh, well, you shouldn't deserve this house. You didn't, you didn't work hard enough." To say, well, I'm sorry. The last time I checked, slavery is illegal, and two, ignorance of the laws of no excuse. Not my fault if you didn't look for it. Yeah. Well, that's and that's something that. That's something that we talked about um, on the call that led us to this interview, was that, and something that I said earlier in, in the show, a lot of people don't know this information, and it takes people like yourself, Dean Clifford, and many others to um, bring it to our attention. Now, once it's brought to our attention, we can't just sit in our high chairs and be spoon-fed this information. We actually have to take it and do something with it and run with it. Um, yes, we can all go to each other and look for information from each other and we can network together to help each other, but we can't look at one person and say, okay, you're the be-all, end-all of everything, now give me everything that you've got and you're going to help me. We have to help ourselves. We're so used to relying on a nanny state to do everything for us we have to learn to take responsibility for ourselves. We consider ourselves to be adults. We want to be free. So many people in this country mistakenly assume that we are free and we're not. So therefore, take the power back into your hands and do something with it. Would you agree with what I just said? Yeah. The thing is, people think that people, uh, when people think that they're free and they're living in the system, just ask themselves that. What happens if the government outlaws protesting? Are you any more? Are you free uh, anymore? Freedom can't be given or taken. No. 
the other thing that uh, one of the get one of the listeners is asking me to do is to uh, provide a disclaimer. What works in one place may not work the same in another place. Those who want to be sovereign have to figure out by trial and error how to get things to work where you live. It's the d degree of ignorance you are dealing with. So what may work in Canada may not necessarily work in the UK, the States, Australia, um, any of the Commonwealth countries. It's, it's all process of uh, elimination and, and trial and error. The other thing to look at is the fact that if you're, you are in Canada, every province works a little bit differently than the other province. So um, do your homework, read up. There's reading that you have to do. You need to do your reading. And yes, I know Black's Dictionary is an awful lot of stuff that kind of makes you feel a little nauseous at times, but it's worth it. Um, there was a fantastic link that was given out um, by Outpost 5, if I'm not mistaken, on the chat. And it's um, everything from... Um, I'm going to repost it in the chat Tango chat. And I've put it up on my group for Lifting the Veil. And that's everything from Black's Law to a whole heaps of stuff. Um, Derek, thank you so much for coming on the show today. This isn't going to be the last time my listeners are going to hear from you. Because, they're, I mean, obviously this was just an introductory, how you doing? Um, I, I'm hoping to see you on Friday with Dean, yes? Yeah, most, de most definitely, yeah. That sounds great. And then um, if anybody has any questions for me, please, by all means, email me at the station, uh, which is freethinkradio at gmail.com. If you have any questions for Derek or Dean as well, um, please feel free to email the station again at freethinkradio at gmail.com. And um, if anybody uh, has questions that are coming for Friday's show, by all means, again, send an email out there, send it on Facebook, send it to the group. It's It doesn't matter where you send it. If you want your question answered, I will do my best to get it out there. Um, I also want to uh, let everybody know that I've got Melinda from the Womb Sauna coming in to talk about reproductive female issues and uh, treatments. I know it's a little bit off of the topic of <laughs> what I've been talking about in the last couple of weeks, but um, tell your sisters, tell your mothers, Tell your friends uh, this is something that's important that we need to be talking about. Um, we need to know that there are other remedies other than hormone replacement therapies and other things like that that we need to be looking into. So please tune into Wednesday's show where I'm going to have Melinda on from the womb sauna. Um, again, Derek, thanks so much for coming on, and I look forward to talking to you again on Friday.